Hello, everybody. Uh, we're inside the Honda Jet, and I wanted to take this moment to explain some of the avionics to the viewing public. Uh, I'm here at the plane waiting for my databases to uh, synchronize. Uh, we have to update our databases about once a month, and we download that from, uh, well, the, the supplier's Garmin. We download that to an SD card, we bring it into the plane, and we put it here, and then we go through this process. You can see over here, it's updating the internal databases. And that's very important that we, as pilots, have the most accurate information. Things change. Uh, sometimes antennas go up near an airport or um, approach plates can change. Approach plates help us when we get close to the airport and it's instrument conditions and you can't quite see the airport yet, or maybe you can't see the airport at all until you get to a certain altitude, maybe all the way down to 200 feet. And so the approach plate, which I'll show you one of those, uh, gives us very detailed directions uh, over those last, um, let's say, uh, 30 miles of the flight as we're approaching the airport. But <clears throat> while we're waiting for the databases to update, let me go through some of the things that make the Honda Jet so special. Uh, I had mentioned when we were doing a walk around about the avionics and the Honda Jet, uh, I think they're superior to everything else I see in its class. One of the nice things that well, it's not just nice, it's, 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 it's very efficient and very, uh, it's a great safety feature, is if you uh, follow along here, we have a checklist built right into the plane. And I can use my thumb on this thumb wheel and I can, uh, well, number one, I can go through and check things off as you're seeing them being checked off. I just press on this. I can change what checklist uh, I'm looking at. So right now we're just static. Uh, the plane's not started. We have a ground power unit powering the plane, so I don't have to use the plane's battery. Um, so yeah, I'm free to do whatever I want. We're just sitting here in the plane and I'm explaining it to you. So here, starting engines, I would go through, you know, number one thing, passenger briefing, <coughs> passenger briefing, uh, red pedals and what have you. I can go through this checklist very efficiently. And this is superb. Um, you know, I've seen many other YouTubers, uh, many other planes, and certainly my planes before this, we had paper checklists. And I guess that, that you know, certainly better than nothing, but I can't say how great this is to have. Um, it is it is right there at my, literally at my fingertips, my fingertip on this thumb wheel. And uh, it's just it, absolutely terrific. And if I want that to go to go away and look at something else, all I gotta do is hold down on this thumb wheel. And then I can use that space to, to do something else. So I can go over here, if you follow my hand, I move this little, little knob it actually it's kind of like a joystick and i can throw different things up there or i can zoom out that map so here we are on long island and i could zoom out that map uh i could throw traffic there um tell traffic to operate so you'll see actual planes that are around me now i'm sitting on the ground but i can see all the planes that are around me which is <laughs> unbelievably uh fantastic to have you you uh this is a fantastic safety feature so I can see all the planes around me for up to 40 miles. I can zoom this out to the 40 mile ring and uh, plus or minus 2,600 feet. Uh, and, and that's a filter. Uh, we can turn that filter off and see if we're up high all the way to the ground or if we're down low all the way above us. Uh, but usually we keep that filter on and that's the, the normal. Um, uh, but so I can see all the planes around me. And just to explain this this to you, and this is uh, this was developed uh, a, because the Navy had a re request where they, they unfortunately had so many uh, collisions that they went out to, to the industry and they said, hey, we need something to prevent collisions. So um, this level, uh, this is mandated in all passenger planes carrying 30 or more people. But it's also uh, available to those that can build it into their plane. You don't have to have 30 or more people. This is a terrific safety system. So I could see that this plane is, is probably landing. He's, he's only 400 feet above me. That means I'm sitting here on the ground. He's landing. He's, he's approaching the runway. This plane is 1,400 feet above me, and he's about five miles away. This one is coming in probably for a landing. He's 1,200 feet. He's probably in the pattern. So I can put up there whatever I want. I could display weather. We could turn on the radar. I'm not going to do that while we're sitting here on the ground because that puts out a uh, very strong microwave energy, and you don't want to... Um, uh, send that towards anybody who's working the line. So, but we can turn that on in the air. And I think I mentioned that uh, before when I was talking outside the plane about the radome, which is up in the, the pointy nose of the plane. 
So this is what we call tactical radar, or what I call tactical radar. It's real time down to the millisecond and I can control, I can, I'm not gonna turn it on, but I can, I can show you, I can, I can, I can, well, let me go back to that. I can change the, the, the ring. So, um, could go out 200 miles, probably wouldn't use that for 200 miles. I would use next red for 200 miles, uh, but I could zoom it in and that's more used as you're getting close to a, a storm system. Uh, you don't want to go through storm systems. You want to go around them, above them, below them. Uh, with this plane, because it goes so high, it goes up to 43,000 feet, or in, in pilot lingo, we call that flight level 430. Uh, we can get above just, just about all the weather. Uh, it's very rare, rare um, in North America for weather to go past that, um, that, that, that level of height. So for us, most of the time, uh, we're going to try to climb above it and then stay above it. But nevertheless, we want to know where it is, or maybe we're coming in for a landing and, uh, you know, now we can't go above it. We're going to down, we're going to uh, uh, put the next red. We're going to see it, uh, from the next red, which is very similar to what you see on your weather channel. Um, oh, this is really cool. So this is before I tell you about that plane, as I know, let me go back to traffic. So that's actually displaying here. And if I was in the air, uh, there would be an annunciation traffic traffic and it would tell me where that traffic is but you can see i'm i'm sitting here on the ground and um so the traffic is really not a factor for me but but that's that plane he's 700 feet he he just took off from the runway and that's what that is and um i'm parallel the runway uh sitting here at what's called the fbo the fixed based operator he that plane just took off and you can actually see it come up on this screen too which is absolutely fantastic and now he's making a, a right turn and you can see he's at 900 feet above us and you can see it on that screen. So this is a great, just sitting here, uh, instead of just flying, I think it's given me an opportunity. Obviously I can't do all this when I'm flying to explain some things to you. Um, and and the, the plane just has so many safety features. Here, if we were in, um, I'm gonna go, I mentioned the weather, so that, that would be our weather radar. Uh, we can also uh, pull down uh, next red. Um, I can actually pull that down. Now, I don't think there's any way, weather really around us and and uh, so uh, <laughs> can't really demonstrate uh, uh, thunderstorms when there's no thunderstorms around us so uh, but if there were it would display here or I could go back to the onboard radar um, TAWS is the terrain um, it's the terrain uh, awareness system uh, so if we're flying coming in for a landing and there's high tall buildings there's um, uh, radio towers or maybe we're in mountainous terrain. It's going to display all that. So each one of these symbols means, uh, if it's red, it means it's 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 uh, below uh, or uh, I'm within a thousand feet of it. Now I'm on the ground, so obviously not a factor. These things are above me because I'm, uh, you know, on the ground. Um, but um, so that that's extremely helpful as far as knowing terrain around you, antennas and things like that. So we, we can see that I can put my flight plan there, and I don't have one plugged in. Um, but I could, I could bring up a flight. I, I'll just put in a quick flight plan. So I'll just I think tomorrow we're going to go to Hyannis. So I don't know. Let's see. Where's my H? This is not a QWERTY keyboard, by the way. <laughs> uh, so sometimes you got to say, where is that, that letter? And I rest my finger. I don't know if you notice that I'm resting one finger here and then this finger is going around. I'm actually a very good touch typist, but you're not going to touch type on this. So I just put in a simple flight plan and I can put in, let's say, uh, a few waypoints on the way. Uh, BDR is uh, Bridgeport, and and so you see it popping up here. It's down here. I can throw that on. A, I can go back to the moving map, and you will see that. So there, there's all the traffic. Uh, we, <laughs> this is the big city. We, you know, we're not far from New York City. We're uh, out in Long Island. It, it is suburbia, but uh, you you have a lot of planes here. You have a lot of population. And uh, that, that's all the planes. So uh, learning to fly here is kind of like growing up in, in, in New York City. You become very worldly very quick. If you can fly here, you can fly basically anywhere in the world. Um, so I just threw in this this little route and Farmingdale, and I threw in Bridgeport as a waypoint. And then um, I can actually scroll this for you. And this is better on the big screen. I could throw this over to my big screen. I could see uh, planes around me, airspace, airports i mean an unbelievable system so this is uh, cape cod um down if you look watch follow my hand down here is this touch bed 
Now, look at the cursor up here. I know I got your eyes going left and right, but my finger's actually controlling that cursor. So this is very much like an iPad, and I can actually pinch and zoom. Oh, so cool. And I could go to, that's Teterboro. I could say info. What's the info on Teterboro? Oh, here are the frequencies. Here's the current weather. I can download that at Teterboro. I can, just like that, I can pull up the winds at 250 degrees at eight knots. Visibility is 10 miles clear, basically a beautiful day. And um, so the functionality of this is just absolutely terrific uh, compared to what we all had to learn to fly. I mean, when I started to learn to fly, it was paper charts and believe it or not, a slide rule. Then we got sophisticated with a digital calculator that replaced the slide rule and no autopilot. And you you, you had that on a knee board here and you, you had a hand fly, no autopilot and, and navigate and oh, it was radio navigation, no GPS, no moving map, none of that stuff. So this is a tremendous improvement. Um, so I can, I can see the airport diagram. Now, let me show you something else. So we're working on this screen. Uh, I started off by talking about the checklist. Um, I'm going to push that button. Well, actually I'll move this over to this screen. I just, by pushing this, I'm now taking control of this screen and, uh, I'm going to put the map up there and I'm going to make it go full screen. Now it's going to take both panels. This is called the Garmin 3000 system. Uh, but there's variations of it. And as far as I have studied and seen, and trust me, I'm very uh, diligent about these type of things. The Honda Jet has the best variation of it. There's no other company that I know that has the built-in uh, checklist uh, at this level jet in the Garmin 3000. This is, we have three different 15-inch screens. Uh, down here is what's called the CDUs. These are like iPads. These are touch sensitive. Uh, they're, they're absolutely fantastic, and they let us control everything that's displayed up here and, and request what information we need, put information up on the screens. I can take the screen and I can split it. So uh, the co-pilot, or if I don't have a co-pilot with me, I could take uh, control and, and, and put something else up here. Um, I can say on that screen, um, put up a chart. Um, and so here we are in the airport. This is just the airport chart. Now, if I want that screen to take over this screen, I push this button full and there we are. But now I'm controlling it with this, C, what's called the CDU. By the way, everything in the military and everything in, in uh, aviation, you got to have an acronym. Uh, they just, just the way they, uh, they are. Um, so this is the CDU and now I just pushed on this and I can uh, zoom this in and out. So you can see where the plane is. I can move it around. Uh, so very controllable. Let me show you while I'm at it. Let me show you an approach chart. So let's say we were coming in for a landing here uh, at Farmingdale and uh, my home airport. And uh, we were we were going to use what's called the instrument landing system. Um, ILS. Again, there we go with the acronyms. <laughs> you got to love it. Um, so that that is the what's called the approach plate. And let's assume that it's not a beautiful day like it is today, that it's a miserable day. It's snowing, sleeting, and the weather's down to 200 feet. I can get in to this airport, no problem. Uh, you just still have to be an instrument-rated pilot and know how to do all these things. But this, the systems are there. Uh, so, you know, right now the, the plane is static. It's we're, we're on the ground. But, uh, you know, I could be coming in from the from the west or from the east. And I come around, they'll, they'll give me usually vectors, um, which is basically directions. And I'm going to come over to this funnel. And uh, so I, I would bring up this chart. I would brief it at least 60 miles out and uh, know what I have to do. Um, and now this is my home airport, so I pretty much have this one memorized. But still, I bring it up. I brief it. Uh, it's interesting when we say briefing it, even if it's just me in the plane, uh, you talk to yourself. And um, my wife said to me, uh, well, it's not a problem as long as you don't answer yourself. <laughs> but sometimes I do. Uh, so, uh, you know, but it, it's a very good discipline for pilots to not just keep things in their head, even if they're the only person in the plane, but to make call outs like someone is sitting right next to them and to enunciate different things. So you'll see me in the videos enunciating V1, V rotate, uh, or some people say rotate, um, different air speeds, V ref. Uh, and I'm talking to myself, I'll, 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 I'll definitely talk to myself about gear down. I will say it out loud even though I just flipped the switch and the gear is down. And I'll, I'll say that two or three times usually uh, as I approach the uh, airport. But going back to the uh, uh, approach plate here, 
Um, I'm kind of glad I'm updating my GPSs today. And it gives me a chance to do what I, I mean, I could do some of this while I'm flying, but certainly I can't get this level of detail and this level of focus because obviously I have to fly. But now I can kind of give you a class or give your class if you're so interested. Um, and, and frankly, I don't know. Uh, I, I think this is interesting. Um, so I'm using my finger to scroll it. You could also use this little joystick. I could zoom it in and out. Uh, down here, uh, well, let me start up here. So here's the map view. And uh, this is the kind of the horizontal, not kind of, it is the horizontal directions. Go left, go right to get on course. And you want to come down this funnel where I kind of think of it as like a chute. You're kind of coming down the chute. But there's a vertical component. So there's a left and right component, and you have to get into that chute and come down the line. But there's the vertical component. You can't be too high or too low, right? Don't want to be too low. Um, but you, you're, you're coming in at an angle, three-degree glide slope in towards the runway. And so there's a vertical component. And where do we see that? We see that here. So, and, and, and pilot uh, lingo, it's saying that um, they're going to vector me around and um, I'm going to be no higher than 6,000 feet, no lower than 1,600 feet uh, should I be to intercept this. And as I get into this chute horizontally and start coming down, this 1,400 feet, this is what's called glide slope intercept. And there'll be something that comes up here that says GS, which is the glide slope. And once you've intercepted that, you're coming down vertically. And so you kind of you think of it as a funnel, uh, both left and right, top and bottom. You're just coming down in a nice funnel and following that in. And I can go down to 277 feet. Now you said, Don, you said 200 feet. Well, the airport at this point is 77 feet high. So this will get me 200 feet AGL above above the ground. That's the above ground uh, uh, altitude. And really, um, rare is the day. I mean, there are days that actually go below that. And then you can't you can't uh, land at this airport if the weather's below that. You have to go to a different airport. You would do a missed approach if you're trying to come in here, and you go to an alternate. Uh, but you're, you're, you should know this as a pilot coming in. You're, get, you're getting lots of weather information. You know what the ceiling is supposed to be. So sometimes you, you might know that an airport's gone down below minimums, and you don't even head that way. You maybe go to your alternate right away. So this is what's called the approach plate. We have all kinds of maps in here. Uh, I can Let me just go back, and I'll, I'll throw up a map, right? And I can I can display different things on that map. Um, so let's go high IFR. <laughs> I know it's a lot of information. I remember those days as a student. It's a lot. So this is uh, a, I'm not going to begin to explain this, but us pilots geek out on it. We understand what all those lines and squigglies mean. They mean something to us. Their directions. We have different instrument flight routes. Um, go back to this view. Um, I could go back and I could do I can totally control with, uh, what information is, is being displayed. So these circles represent airspace. Um, and you have to, once th there's different levels of airspace and a lot of them, most of them require permission to, so you're talking to air traffic control. This is a controlled field. So there's a tower here. So I need permission to taxi. I need permission to take off. And I certainly need permission to land. And uh, of course, they're not going to deny you these permissions, but there's a protocol, there's a procedure. And uh, so this is showing me the different airspace. Let me zoom that in a little bit. Um, it's also showing me things that are higher than me. It's showing me planes that are around me. Um, I can throw up uh, different routes on there if I so wanted. Uh, go back to here and map settings. And I can go to aviation and I could say, put the high altitude roofs that's similar to the map you saw before perhaps uh, a little less cluttered and uh, yeah there's a lot of information to absorb to take in um it's funny i was talking to somebody and they said well could you learn about my real estate requirements for my type of business i said if i could learn to fly a jet i think i can and um there's a lot to learn to become a jet pilot there's a lot to learn to become an instrument rated pilot and there's a lot to learn to just become a private pilot but it's, it's a very cerebral thing. It's very rewarding because um, I, I compare it to maybe playing a musical instrument and you, you know, you practice, you practice, you practice, you finally get good enough and, and then you get better and better and better. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot to learn. It is complex and that's the kind of the joy of it. You know, it, it is very stimulating. Think of it as a chess game in a way, you know? Um, and, and of course you have to have very good dexterity to be able to, you know, nicely take off, nicely land that plane something that you know all us pilots get judged on we get judged on think about the last time you you uh 
uh, went commercial. What did, what did you judge the pilot on? You judged them or pilots. You judged them on the landing. Let's be honest. Uh, of course, there's a lot more than the landings, just like the last minute or two. Uh, but there's a lot to it. Uh, but so so that's the different things that we can turn on and off. We can turn on different things with land data. Um, oh, I can turn on an inset wi window. I can uh, I can have my vertical navigation. This is terrain now. Of course, we're not in the air, so you don't see the plane. When we do the flight, you'll see the plane in the air. And if I want to stay at the same altitude or if I want to go up or I want to go down, there'll be a line there. So I could show the, the vertical um, um, navigation. There's, there's a lot. Uh, so uh, yeah, really cool stuff. Um, so now I've done the split screen again. Here on this on this one, I have my flight plan that we just made up and I put it in and uh, I could go back to that one and I could say, make that full screen. And so now on this bottom portion, I have more information, right? And you notice there's the checklist that's over here. So typically what I'll do on this screen um, is I usually put my traffic on that screen. Right. But you could, you know, each pilot has their own SOP. That's my SOP. I like my traffic on that screen. And I usually have my, when I'm coming into the airport, my approach plate here or sometimes here. Uh, weather is usually here, though. Sometimes I could throw it there. And what's great is you have choices. Now, over here in this stack of information, we have all our, our uh, engine instruments. Right now, the engines are shut off, so we're at zero percentage power. But N1 is the percentage of power. ITT, very interestingly, is the uh, internal uh, temperature of the engines in Celsius. So uh, th these engines run uh, pretty cool. They run at about 560 degrees Celsius when they're in normal uh, cruise, but they can go up to 860 on startup and then come down. Um, most engines run hotter than that. Um, well, harder than that for cruise. Uh, um, but uh, you know, th th these engines run, run relatively cool. And I'm talking in degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. The numbers would be much higher in Fahrenheit. Um, this is the pounds of fuel in a jet. You you um, you don't go by gallons. You go by pounds. Um, and so that's all my fuel, left tank, right tank, and center tank. My gear is down. This is the pitch trim. I can control that with this little knob here. You see my thumb? I can move that here. And I have a backup. I'll take off the sunglasses. Oh, I'm in night mode, so things are dim. Turn that to not material, but so let's do that. No. Day mode. All of a sudden, you can see uh, things will light up more. These will light up more, and and we purposely want to dim those at night, because otherwise they're like blindingly bright. But so here is my alternative, my backup pitch trim, and I can move the pitch trim with that. Uh so moving on. I've, I've given you a lot of information. You know, for some, the people are going to geek out on it. Some, been, you know, maybe this isn't. You know, for them, it's a, it's too much information. But let me just give you a few more basics. Um, over here uh, on the right side, and this is a this, these these instrument clusters are standardized. Um, so on on the uh, right side is the altitude. Now the reason it's saying 520 feet is the barometric pressure, which I haven't said, isn't 3018. It's much lower today. That changes day by day, hour by hour. But the barometric pressure would be 29.71 inches of mercury. Now, there's a metric version of that. So if you're flying in Europe, you're going to be using uh, the metric uh, system. Don't ask me why we, we're not using the metric system here in the United States on a lot of things or everything, but we're not. So this is inches of mercury. Um, and you're familiar with that by just looking at any weather forecast, looking at your iPhone, or your iPad, you can see what the barometric pressure is. And typically, when the pressure drops, so today's kind of an anomaly. It's a beautiful day and the pressure is kind of low. But typically when the pressure drops, it invites bad weather. And when the pressure is high, it pushes out the bad weather. Simply. Um, on the left is our airspeed. Um, and this, and we're not actually doing any speed. This is a bug of 95 knots. That's the initial speed. And you see it says no wind data because we're static. We're on the ground. Uh, we have different clocks here. We have temperature. Um, we have this is this area here is called the, is, is where we have our cast messages, a crew alerting system. So messages are uh, in, in Cyan are uh, informational left engine shutdown, right engine shutdown, uh, external power door open. That's because I have external power unit hooked in and that's displayed here too. Um, so um, I'm going to re restart the uh, avionics. And by the way, uh, electronics that are in a plane are called 
AV Onyx. Another one of those little things that you could uh, win, a, win a, some kind of contest on, I guess. Um, while the, the avionics are restarting, up here is where we control our autopilot. Um, as planes go, uh, the, the Honda Jet did such a great job of minimizing the buttons. This might look complicated to you, but I say look back on some of the photos of some of the older planes, and this this is this is the the bee's knees. This is this is really very uh, um, very manageable. And so you see that as we're starting up, data link, radio, these are things that uh, the computer's going through different tests. Those things will probably disappear. Um, so as as it, as the plane, uh, the electronics uh, get going and just like much more reliable than your computer. I was going to say, just like your computer, when you start up, it goes through different things are loading, different things are getting tested. And uh, saying here, standby flight charts are is being, is being processed. You know, that's bad English. Flight charts is plural and says it's being processed. It should be standby flight charts are being processed. Well, my English teachers of all would be proud. So, um, Garmin's coming up. Nice little picture of the Honda Jet. All my uh, systems are, then uh, all my navigation's up to date. By the way, before I press the button on this screen, you might note now this changed. That's, that's what's so cool about it. Uh, it's kind of like a Tesla. Tesla's got a big 15-inch uh, screen. Maybe longer. I don't know. It's big. I have one, and 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 they could put what they want on that. So here, these are screens. So while this screen is 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 not really being used yet because I haven't pushed this button, look, it's giving me my fuel. All the information that was over here is now over here, and that is because this is in right now in redundancy mode. If this screen were to go out in flight, all the information would come over here, and we'd keep on flying, and obviously fly it to nearest airport and have somebody come and fix it. Uh, but it is total redundancy uh you know different screens could theoretically go out they have it but they could and you keep on flying and then you got back up on top of back up on top of back which is great um and now that i've pushed that button you notice that went away and it's back to the checklist by the way i have my emergency checklist up here i can scroll up and go past normal and say oh but there was an emergency what you know and then i can go to different things and you know see what my emergency procedures are now uh I made the comment before. I'm going to reiterate that I I do have what's called the QRH. All, all pilots and all planes are mandated to have this quick reference handbook. It has all the emergencies. Every plane that you fly on, be it a Boeing, Airbus, you you name it, little Cessna, um, here in the states and the same in Europe, uh, they're mandated to have these emergency checklists. And so that's the paper version. But I love to have the digital version. I make the comparison. No, that's pretty fast. It's all labeled super well you go to a certain number and you can get to that page very quick i like to have it up electronically too so that that's another big plus and the other uh planes don't have it uh not, not up here they have the paper checklist so i do like that uh, i think i'm rounding the bend i'm gonna uh, taper it off this has been a hopefully informative to you the sun is kind of blasting in on the right side for me um but it's, it's given me the opportunity when i'm not flying to explain a lot of the things and if you follow our videos then a lot They'll make probably, not probably, they'll definitely make more sense. You'll know on the right side is my altitude, on the left side is my airspeed. Here is my compass. This is where the navigation will be. Uh, magenta is GPS. Uh, green lines are radio. And we'll get into some of that on some of the flex. So listen, thank you for taking the time. Um, I tried to talk uh, at the speed of a New York air traffic controller. Uh, so you can absorb a lot of information quickly. And uh, we really do appreciate you coming to the channel and uh, learning about our plane, learning about the Honda Jet. And... You know, if someone has a commercial real estate need, well, give us a call. That's what we do. Thank you and have a great day.